Welcome to Cogito, Cloud Native Business Automation. Um, our project is indeed uh, uh, aimed to bring uh, business automation uh, to the cloud. Uh, my name is uh, Mario Fusco, um, and I'm a Red Hat Principal Software Engineer. I'm the project lead of Drules, the rule engine of Red Hat, which is one of the key components uh, of uh, Cogito. I'm one of the founder of the project and the Java champions. And with me, we have uh, Eduardo Vacchi, uh, which is also one of the founder of the Cogito project and uh, Red Hat Senior Software Engineer. Uh, I will uh, pass uh, the stage to Eduardo for this first part. Thanks, Mario. The world around us has changed. We no longer develop monolithic applications to be deployed inside application servers, but we actually develop tinier services with a tinier footprint and deploy them to hosted services, managed services, cloud providers that orchestrate these containers. And we pay for the resources that we use rather than owning the entire infrastructure and managing on our own. Because of this, we care much more today about resource usage and application density than we used, uh, than we used to do before. And that's why other runtimes different than uh, traditional Java uh, application frameworks uh, have gained more and more interest and traction. And among those, there's Node.js or Go application binaries. But this is uh, the, the fact that Java applications are generally uh, larger and with a larger footprint, it's not intrinsic to Java. It's more of a property of these frameworks. And in fact, if we pick the right framework, uh, and I would say uh, a cloud native, and not just native as in binary executable, but a cloud native Java runtime, Java framework, uh, we can achieve a much uh, higher application density. Today we're going to talk to you about cloud native business automation. And business automation is a widely known term that embraces a variety of components, um, components such as processes, rules, and mathematical optimization. When we talk about this, uh, and our platform uh, means uh, JVPM, Drools, and OptiPlanner. But today we're not going to talk about these uh, projects in particular, but we're going to talk about something different, something new, Cogito. Cogito is a reimagining of these engines that you already probably know and, uh, and rethink them in such a way that they are much better suited for a cloud environment in a variety of ways. First of all, the application that you generate using Cogito have a much tinier footprint, thanks, if you want, even to native binary compilation, and also have a low code. Uh, they, they are low, Cogito is a low code platform because it allows you to um, write very little code and obtain a fully working REST service. Now, besides rules, and decisions, processes in case, and mathematical optimization, a peculiarity of Cogito is serverless workflow. What is serverless? Well, serverless is a particular rethinking of, develop, of the service development strategy in such a way that services, services are so small, so tiny, that they just do one very specific thing to the point that we call them functions. These functions are very tiny services that are uploaded to the managed platform that cares for their execution, scaling, and of course, billing. Because these applications are so tiny, you no longer just orchestrate these containers. We, you actually orchestrate functions and you really care about the flow of the data from one function to the other. And that's where workflows come into uh, the picture. Workflows in business, in business automation are actually often called processes. And in fact, uh, workflows are a very important part of business automation. 
But workflows are also relevant for serverless deployments. In fact, workflow is just a word demeaning the description of the procedural movement of information or data from one stage to another, and uh, such movement, such, such stages can be processed in a sequential or parallel way. This is just true, um, just as true in a business process set setting as it is true uh, for a serverless um, orchestration setting. And that's why uh, we are introducing serverless workflow specification. The serverless workflow specification is a multi-vendor effort is a, to bring to multiple cloud vendors a shared specification uh, for describing workflow in a serverless setting. Most vendors have their own flavor, their own uh, implementation of a serverless workflow on a, on a function orchestration system, uh, but there is no shared specification. And this specification from the Cloud Native Computing Foundation uh, that we contribute, uh, it's actually meant to give an answer to that, to that problem. With this specification, you can describe very simple workflows, such as this hello world, where just one function is called, to more complicated, where uh, an external service is called and a cloud event is sent back as a response, and there's a decision. And so you can get to the level, the degree of complexity that, that you want. That you... In this very tiny example, we're going to uh, supply this serverless workflow with some data, a name, and a choice of a language, and depending on the, on the language that was chosen, a different message will be returned. So we have deployed our application on top of Knative uh, and compiled it using Quirkus into a binary image to get very fast start of time. You can see that as the request comes in, new containers are being spun up uh, depending on the number the request that comes in, and it will scale it up automatically uh, without you, without requiring you any further action. Cogito leverages Quarkus in order to make it possible to compile down to very tiny Java executable, and even if you want, even tinier native executables. It supports, Quarkus supports a, a, a variety of standards that you probably already know, so you don't have to relearn anything. But Quarkus gives you a possibility to produce very tiny executable that have a very fast start of time, and that's why it makes it uh, for a great uh, platform, a great framework for developing cloud native applications and even serverless applications. What is DMN? DMN is a standard for decision, decision management, and we support this standard along with rules. It's a complement to analytics and AI models in general. And within Cogito, it integrates also with analytic models providing explainable white box decisions. So back to you, Mario, for the demo. This is a very simple DMN model made by two input, a driver, and the violation he committed, plus two decisions, the fine to be applied for that violation, and whether or not the driver license should be suspended. The first decision is modeled with a table, associating to each violation the monetary amount of the fine and the points to be added to your driving, driving license. The second uh, decision just states that uh, if you have 20 or more points on your driving license, it will be suspended. So let's try to give a run uh, to this uh, example in uh, development mode. As you can see, uh, doing so, Quarkus open a debug port, uh, by default the port uh, uh, 5005. But more important, it also allows a uh, development mode, meaning that you can change the code of your Java sources and see the corresponding changes immediately applied to the running application without the need of restarting it. The Cogito Quarkus extension brings the same possibility also to all formats supported by Cogito, like DRL for rules, BPMN for processes, 
and of course the MN in our case. Moreover, the same extension also automatically gen generates for you a decision service in the form of a rest endpoint. So uh, this re rest endpoint has, uh, has part of the same name of a DMN model and is totally automatically generated uh, for you. You don't have to write any light of code. So let's try to put this at work. Uh, I'm invoking uh, this uh, rest endpoint with a driver with 16 points uh, on its license and uh, uh, doing a, um, a speed violation of 20 kilometers per hour. In this case, uh, um, the, um, I will have a fine of uh, 500 euros. Three points uh, will be added to my driving license that uh, sum it up with this uh, existing uh, 16 points made 19. And this means that uh, my, driving, my driving license uh, doesn't have to be suspended yet. Uh, but as I said, it's also possible to change your business logic on the fly without restarting the server. For instance, we can try to change uh, one decision here. Let's try to uh, change these, uh, uh, the points added for this uh, violation from 3 to 5. If I uh, perform the same REST uh, uh, call again, you will see that this time the points added to my license will be fine. And this means that I will have 21 points in total, uh, meaning that uh, also my driving license will be suspended. Uh, finally, other than providing this super useful development mode, Cogit and Quarkus integration also allows to create a native image of, of your application. I created uh, uh, and already compiled uh, mine, so let me try to launch it. So this is my native, uh, the native, uh, the application containing, uh, the native image containing my application. Uh, and as you can see, it started in only uh, 12 uh, milliseconds, uh, making it a perfect fit for a serverless, our serverless uh, environment. And of course, uh, we can try to uh, run the uh, same uh, REST invocation again, and we will obtain exactly the same uh, result as expected. Thanks for watching.